So many people wonder how a helicopter flies and what the flight controls do. Basically, two hands, two feet. I'm going to show you all about what each of those do in this video. So stick around. Hi, I'm Rick James from The Pilot Teacher and today we're going to go and look at the flight controls of a helicopter, in particular the A-Star B2 which you've got sitting behind me right here. Um, it takes a long time to learn how to fly and hovering is <laughs> it's a serious challenge. Um, I love teaching new people how to fly um, and hovering makes you sweat until you get it figured out. It's just like riding a bike, you're all over the place and then one day that penny drops, I say, and uh, you're kind of getting it figured out. But in the meantime, God, it is funny, but it makes you sweat. So um, let's go and have a look at the flight controls. We're going to talk about what each one does and what it does to the aircraft to make it fly. Uh, and I hope you find it enjoyable. So let's go have a look. So here we are in the helicopter. So we have basically three flight controls that we use to fly the aircraft. First one is the cyclic, which the pilot uses with their right hand. The second one is the collective, which is down here, which we use with the left hand. And then the third controls are the pedals, which are down at my feet. So the way that we operate the aircraft is, first of all, let's talk about the cyclic. The cyclic is used, oh, where's my helicopter? The cyclic, bent blades, it's not going to fly very well with bent blades. Um, so we have the aircraft. If I want to move the aircraft down and go forward, I'm going to push forward on the cyclic. Same if I want to move the aircraft left, right, forwards, backwards. The cyclic basically controls the aircraft's position over the ground and it also makes the aircraft fly whichever direction I want once we go into forward flight. So that is the cyclic. And the way that it does that is as these rotors are turning, imagine this is like a disc, as you can see. And what this does is the cyclic through the swash plate tilts that disc the way I want the aircraft to move. So when I push the cyclic forward, the aircraft's disc is going to tilt forwards and then the rest of the aircraft is going to follow. Same if I want to go backwards, I pull aft on the cyclic, it's going to tilt the disc backwards, the aircraft is not going to follow. Um, so that's how we move the aircraft over the ground and we direct it in forward flight. So that is the cyclic. To make the aircraft go up and down, so when we want to lift into a hover, uh, we use the collective. So when I raise the collective, what it does is it increases the pitch on all the main rotor blades together and what that does is it creates more lift and pulls the aircraft upwards. If I want to descend or land back on the ground I lower the collective with my left hand and the aircraft then begins to settle. Um, as I raise and lower the collective I have to increase power on the engine because as each blade um, pitches when it's rotating through the air, as it pitches, it creates more drag coming out the back. So think of it like when you were a kid and you stuck your hand out the car window and it flew fine. Second you did this, it went, it went up and back. And up is the lift that it's creating and back is because of the drag. And the drag will slow down the main rotor as I raise the collective and put more pitch on the rotor blades. So what I need to do is I need to put more power into the engine to overcome that drag and keep. <laughs> really? <laughs> I swear I've picked the noisiest day to make a video. Come on, go forward. There we go. <laughs> so, where was I? Um, yeah, so the, op uh, the main rotor needs to be maintained at about 394 RPM and as I increase the pitch of the blades using the collective, it creates more drag, it's gonna slow the blades down. So I need more power to push the blades through the air, maintaining 394 RPM. So it does it automatically. As I raise the collective, it also increases the um, fuel going into the engine. So it's all balanced, it all takes care of itself, which makes my job a bit easier. 
in the old machines like the Bell 47, you used to have to roll the throttle up and down. So as you raise the collective, you'd have to roll the throttle on, put more power in. And then as you load the collective, you'd have to roll the throttle off to maintain your RPM at whatever the RPM was for the Bell 47. Sorry, I can't remember it. It's been <laughs> way too long since I flew that little guy. Um, so collective makes the aircraft go up and down and also increases the engine power um, to maintain the rotor RPM. So then we go to the pedals and the pedals basically allow the aircraft to turn around the mast and it's called yaw. So if I'm sitting in a hover here and I wanna go out to take off this way, what I've got to do is I've got to go and press in left pedal and what that does is it alters the pitch of the tail rotor blades and it turns the aircraft. And to stop it, I basically recenter the pedals. Unless I'm really putting in lots of pedal, then I've got to press right pedal to counteract it and slow it down. Um, but then once I put the pedals back to the neutral position, the aircraft will sit facing the direction that I want it to go. So if I want to turn the aircraft to the right, I press right pedal. If I want to turn the aircraft nose to the left, I press left pedal. Um, and that's about as simple as it gets with each individual flight control. The problem with a helicopter is because everything is in balance or equilibrium when you're sitting in a hover, in a stable hover, when you change or when you adjust one control, it affects all the other ones. Let's say I'm sitting there in a hover and I want to now transition to forward flight. What's going to happen is everything is balanced, it's all in equilibrium. Lift equals weight, so I'm sitting there balanced in the hover. Now, the second I push forward on the cyclic, that thrust vector that was heading straight down is now going backwards. So I'm gonna start descending because I'm no longer balanced. There's some of that thrust that was going down is now going backwards to push me forwards. So what happens is, as I start to go forwards, the aircraft's gonna go down. So what I have to do to maintain altitude is I've got to raise the collective. As I raise collective, it puts more power into the rotor system. And because of Newton's third law, every action has an equal and opposite reaction. If I put more power into the rotor system, it's gonna to wanna to turn the, uh, the fuselage in the opposite direction. So to counteract that, I've got to put in right pedal to stop the aircraft basically doing this. So, I'm going to go into forward flight, so forward cyclic is going to descend. I've got to raise the collective to, to keep my altitude over the ground the same. And I've got to put in right pedal, in the A-star anyway, to stop the nose from turning to the left because of Newton's third law. So every time you move a control, you have to move the other two in the right amount and at the right time so that you basically go forward and then you maintain altitude and your tail stays directly behind you. Until you've got that coordination sorted out, you're all over the place. So um, if you wanna see what I'm on about, go down to your local helicopter flight school and watch the uh, students coming into a hover or picking up into a hover and you'll see they're all over the place. Um, a pilot that's, uh, that's experienced makes it look easy, just like any really good professional. Um, it's fun, it's fun to watch, but it's frustrating as hell when you're trying to learn. So every time you move a control, you've got to move the other two, you've got to move them in the right amount, otherwise your aircraft's gonna be dancing and it's gonna be fun for the people to watch, but it's gonna make the student pilot sweat. So that's how the controls of a helicopter work. So hopefully now you've got a good understanding of what each flight control does and uh, why it can take so long to uh, get the coordination right. It's kind of like learning how to play the drums. Um, it's fun. It's a really, really cool thing to do. And if you're interested in becoming a helicopter pilot, go for it. It's one of the best decisions I ever made. So if you like this, give me a thumbs up. It really helps the channel. Hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. Then you'll be notified any time a new video comes up. Damn, it's busy here today. You're trying to do a video and everybody under the sun decides they want to go drive their truck, fly their chopper, fly their plane. They're not realizing I'm trying to do videos for you guys here. Just rude, I tell you. <laughs> so anyway, oh God.
That's as though we've got a 212 lifted off. Um, <laughs> oh well, so yeah, if you enjoyed this video, thumbs up, subscribe, notify, stick your comments in below um, and I'll answer them and we will uh, get the camera out and we'll come and get some of those answers into video and you know I make these videos for you guys you give me the ideas that you want to see and I just love making these videos for you I love to see stuff so I figured you guys do too so yeah uh, enjoy it and I'll see you on the next one